Hi guys. So here is the beautiful female silhouette we did on my free live art class and I think she turned out absolutely gorgeous. I love the ombre. I added a few stars in there. Uh, some little flecks of white because it looked kind of spatial. I loved it. Kind of like night scene into a like the sky coming out. I just thought it added to it. So I'm loving how she's looking. And in this video, I wanted to go over how to resin your canvas. So I'm gonna, there's a couple different ways um, to do it. One is you definitely need to support the back of the canvas because you can see there's some looseness here. And what happens is when you pour resin over a canvas and you don't have any support, it'll sag in the middle, be really thin on the edges, be really thick in the middle. So you definitely have to support it. But first, before anything, so you have to clean your canvas. So I use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and I just give it a good wipe. So this is the isopropyl alcohol. You can pick this up at Walmart, pretty much anywhere, super cheap. Just put a little bit on, wipe your whole canvas, don't wipe over it again, wait till that alcohol evaporates, then you can go back over it. And you just shine it in the light, make sure there's no silicone left on your canvases. And then what you want to do, what a good tip is, so if you don't want any rejection of your resin, you sometimes get little divots and stuff put a few layers of Liquidex gloss varnish. So I buy mine in a bucket, so I just put it in this easy squeeze bottle. But this is just Liquidex gloss varnish, there'll be links in the description. And I put a few layers on it just to protect the canvas and that way also, if there's any silicone on here, you'll be able to tell with the gloss instead of the expensive resin. So that's just a good tip. So basically, I'm just going to squeeze some of this gloss on here and then I'm using just a generic large brush to spread it nice and evenly over the canvas. Don't worry about brush marks because once you put the resin onto your canvas, those are all going to disappear. So it doesn't have to be super neat. You just kind of need to get it on there, make sure everything's coated. I even do the sides. So this is a great first step before you go to resin your canvas is just add a layer of gloss and just make sure it doesn't pool on the sides here <laughs> uh, to your canvas. And sometimes I'll do a couple layers of gloss first, especially if I have uh, some silicone that's rejecting the gloss varnish, then I'll wipe it with some isopropyl alcohol and put another layer of gloss over top. So this way, you don't have to waste any resin by doing a couple layers if you get any divoting. So, and might as well just use the gloss varnish, which is a lot less expensive. Just to find out if you do actually have any silicone pockets or any silicone left on here, you'll actually see it once this Liquidex gloss dries, you'll see it has rejected on that area and you could just clean it up with some more isopropyl alcohol and that way you could do another coat and your resin will be safe. So we're just gliding it across making sure I get a nice even coat. And I can just shine it up in the light make sure she's well coated. I love how she turned out these gorgeous pops of mauve and stuff and pink it's nice and iridescent, so I'm sure the camera doesn't do it much justice. <laughs> and there, so I'm going to let her dry. And then I'll come back and we'll go over the two ways to that you can do resin on a canvas. But this would be how I do step one. Okay, so the Liquidex gloss is dry. And I don't have any silicone that's rejected the gloss. There's a couple of layers of Liquidex gloss on here. So this surface is ready for uh, resin, but 
I've seen a couple of different techniques you can do so you need to support the back and one of the ones I saw so a normal way would be to use some cardboard so I have cardboard and just I cut some one by two and basically when you flip it over so I'll flip her over and just make sure she's in frame for you guys oh there we go <laughs> okay so you would put the cardboard you could cut it a little better than I did inside and then you would just place these one by twos I had made this for a different canvas so they might not fit but if you just cut them to fit inside here I had made them for a different one so they might not fit oh this one might fit on this side <laughs> But if you just place them in here, make sure they're nice and tight down. What you can do is so cut them perfect in between, and that your painting will sit on these, and it'll this cardboard will support the painting. So I'm going to do that with the other one because I had actually cut these for the other canvas. So the size in between varies with all the different canvases, and I did see another way of doing it. Um, I tried to find the link so I could give a shout out on who came up with it, but I lost it. I looked everywhere and I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I tried looking through a whole bunch of different things. But one of the other ways was to pour resin on the back and let it dry first and then flip it over and pour resin on the front. So I'm going to give it a try see how well that works. I didn't really see an end result from the short clip I saw so I'm not sure but I'm gonna try it out. So I mixed up about six ounces of resin. They ask for seven ounces for covering the front and I got some free glitter here, glitter hippo <laughs> from Solar Color Dust when I had ordered some stuff from them and I thought I would add the glitter to make the back of the painting nice and shiny. So this stuff, oh, it's different. It's kind of like a, ooh, well, I'm going to put it all in there. <laughs> That's kind of cool. It's kind of a purple iridescent line glitter. I thought, why not make the back a little pretty since I'm already putting resin on it to test it out. So I thought I would add some glitter in there. And maybe I'll add a little bit of this blue glitter in with the purple to make it look really pretty. So I got a little bit of whoop, blue. That's gonna... This stuff gets everywhere. <laughs> that's gonna get everywhere. That's probably way too much glitter, but that's okay. So basically, when you pour the resin on the back, it's supposed to... And once it hardens, it will support the front. The theory I haven't tried it so that's why I'm trying it today with you guys as another option for supporting the back let's see if it works and then I'm gonna do the usual option where I support it with some cardboard and that's really pretty okay so basically I just flipped it over you don't have to do anything to it and I'm just gonna pour this on I might have too much resin for this but this is a 10 by 20 inch canvas so you just need a thin layer I'm sure for the back just to be supportive so once this cures it's gonna be super hard and it's gonna act just like as a support and I'm gonna push it underneath and spread it around and get it kind of under the stretcher so actually I might this might be enough. So I, for a 10 by 20 canvas, I have mixed up six ounces of resin and just added some sparkle <laughs> just to make it different. Kind of pretty. It's a little bit sparkly and I'm going to just kind of push it up against, oops, the underside. I don't want it to be raised on the underside, I just want to get some good coverage. 
Now there is paint on the front so I'm not really worried. It's not going to go through to the front of your painting. But I think I think that's going to work because it's just going to be a nice thin layer if I can get this kind of pushed into the corners enough. Oops. And maybe not get resin everywhere. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to spread that out a little bit. Nice and even. We got a whole bunch of sparkles in there, which is kind of fun. You could do, I guess, any kind of color on the back, although it's the back, so I really wouldn't worry too much. But I just thought it'd be fun to see what those sparkles were since they were given to me and use them up. All right. Well, that is looking pretty cool. Oh, I did get, oh, there we go. Yeah, it moves pretty good. I'm going to take these off. Um, the other thing with gloves, too, is you can reuse these. So if you just want to peel them off, I just take a paper towel after, and I can wipe and try to keep reusing them as best I can until they rip, basically. So that's kind of another thing you can do. Okay, so I'm going to let that's going to have to cure overnight. I'm going to put this, because this is just a cheap 10 by 20 inch canvas from Michaels, it's kind of warped a little bit, but I'm going to put some weights on here and have it on a level surface, which is important. And then once this is dry, I'll come back and flip it and do the resin pour on the good side, which is the painting side, and see how this technique works for securing your back. Okay, so this is technique number two for stabilizing the back of your canvases before you resin the front. So this is the Ocean Goddess. This is the original painting I created that's, that went a little bit viral with a couple million views, which I greatly appreciate, guys. Thank you so much. It was super amazing. I'm so happy all of you enjoyed watching me create her. I've obviously updated my technique with creating the silhouette since her, but it's still a super fun video. So I really wanted to put a layer of resin to coat on top of her. And what I've done is she's already got a couple coats of Liquid X Gloss Varnish prepped and ready to go. So now I'm going to prep the back side of her. It's very important to tape the edges of the back side of your pieces if you're going to resin the top. That way when the drips of resin happen on the back side, you can just peel this off and get those drips off. And I'll show you that at the end once they're dry. So we need to support the middle with the first technique we're going to try resin. This one, I'm just using a piece of foam board. You can use a piece of cardboard, whatever you have on hand. I cut this foam board a little bit better so it fits more right from edge to edge. And I'm just going to slide it in, just like so. <laughs> and yeah, it fits pretty good. Uh, because of the tape here, it kind of sits in there really well and I folded the tape over. I can just go ahead and tape whoops, tape the foam board in so that it stays nice and flat and flush with the edges. Now you could support it also by using these one by twos. So I had cut these to fit right here inside the canvas. And you want to make sure you don't go put too much, like you want to make sure it stays flush so I'm not pushing too much so you don't get a bevel the opposite way and you just want it to support the middle like that. And then you just go ahead and secure everything in there. So before I do that, I'm gonna secure the foam board on the inside. So just like that, it stays actually pretty good and it supports the whole 
top part even if I put a little bit of pressure on it. So I don't think I actually need these but if you had a larger canvas you would definitely need some wooden supports. You could put them in, tape them, glue them to the foam board, somehow keep them in there. But this is actually working pretty good with just the foam board so I think I'm going to leave it at that and mix up some resin. Okay, I have her raised up on some yellow triangles. I'll just show you. There's a link in the description. These are great to keep your canvases up if you want them a little higher than the push pins. And the middle is secure. Now, very important is that you have your paintings on a level surface. So what you can do is just use a level and just make sure that see right now I have to move the bubble a little bit that way <laughs> is that she's on a level surface because otherwise all the resin would just drip off the end so what I can do is I can just add a couple popsicle sticks to my yellow triangles in the corners so that it raises it up just enough oh. there we go make sure it's all good and then I just check if it's up high enough and not quite let's just check this side good to check not only in the middle but also kind of on the edges and sides and stuff so these popsicle sticks are not quite these are the jumbo ones so they're not quite as thick as the smaller ones so I'm gonna raise her up a little more this is a very important part of resin when you add resin onto your painting is to make sure that they are level okay, and secure. Now that's perfect right in the middle right there and I just check no, middle and sides and sides and then I can check this way and it's looking really good so this will help to just alleviate any problems so you won't have it super thin on one side and thick on the other. And you just want to make sure that she's good and clean before you apply the resin. Sometimes what I'll do is I have a little uh, dust remover, air blower, like what you would use uh, on your computer and stuff. And you can just give it a quick... quick blow lightly dust it off just to make sure everything's good all the dust is off of her and now since she's level we have secured the middle back of the painting and there's a lot of bubbles in here <laughs> so today I'm using art resin I still use it to coat my paintings and stuff it's great I love it it's crystal clear and there's a link in the description if you guys are interested, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody for using my Amazon links. I get a small commission at no extra cost to you guys, and they help me out a lot. So I greatly appreciate it when you guys do that. All right, if you're ready, now we pour. So I'm going to pour all of it on because it asks for, there is an art resin calculator online to find out how much resin you need for your painting. This is a 10 by 20 inch, so you just put in the dimensions and it'll tell you. So it said 7 ounces. I mixed 8 and should be good. <laughs> and I also went and got my lowly Vifi mat, silicone mat that I'm working on today because it's perfect for using resin if it falls off. You just let it dry on the mat and you can just plop it right off. It's perfect. So, if you want, there's a $5 discount if you use my code GEN5, and there's links in the description with info for that. Alright, so you just want to smooth it out to the edges. There are spreaders you can buy uh, for spreading your resin around. This is what they kind of look like. They have different teeth. But you can also use a popsicle stick. I find works good and once I get the majority of the resin moved to the edges then I kind of use my gloves 
and I work it along the sides of the painting. So you do have a fair bit of working time with art resin. I think it's like 45 minutes or an hour or something. So I mean that's a lot of time to be able to move it around, get it to all the edges you need to, and work it. Alright, so now I'll grab my craft torch. And this will help pop all the bubbles and give you a nice clean crystal clear coating. And then once you're done popping all the bubbles, you just want to cover it with a dust protector and let it cure overnight. So basically you just look in the light, you check for bubbles, and make sure you don't have any. If you see some divots and stuff, just add some resin in there. And once I cover this, I'm just going to leave it cure. I might come back and double check on it a few times and make sure that everything's still good. And that's it for this one. And once the other one is dry on the back, I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to resin the front and see how well that works with creating that different technique for the other silhouette and coating it with resin. Okay, so this is dry. I'll just show you the back. It's all nice and dry and hard. And it actually makes for a really amazing hard surface. So I'm just going to make sure that she's, oh yeah, in view. <laughs> So yeah, that worked out really perfectly actually. Um, if you can tell, she's, it's almost like a board it created. So that worked out really good actually to put resin in the back of the canvas. Now you do have to use extra resin then in this process, but if you use canvas, as you can tell, it really worked good to make the surface nice and solid and prepared to do a coat of fresh resin on the painting. So I gave it a good clean up and I'm ready to pour the resin on top. So I'm super excited that this worked out really good. So I've mixed up, this is a 10 by 20 inch canvas, so I've mixed up seven ounces of art resin for the top. And I'm just going to pour it on. And there, just like that. And look at this, it's not sagging in the middle or anything, so that's pretty amazing. So that technique works really, really good to help support the middle of the canvas. Now if you didn't want to use extra resin, because it is a little bit more expensive than putting foam board or cardboard on the bottom, you could do the other technique, which I did with the Ocean Goddess. So I'm just going to pull all the resin to the sides, like the other one, get a good coating. And then I will let this dry and we can compare the two processes. But so far both of them were, have seemed to be working really good. And this is working really good to make a nice even surface. Now I did level off the painting. That's why you see these here. <laughs> Making sure that this surface is nice and level to accept the resin. Okay, I think she looks amazing. 
So I'm going to let this dry and then I'll bring the two back and just show you the final results. But so far they're working out great, these two techniques. Okay, so this is dry. I'm going to put that one there. So it looks really good. I'm just going to shine her in the light so you can kind of see that it's all got the beautiful resin on. And it worked really well to resin the back like this and then to resin the front. The only thing is it gives it a lot of weight. So right now, and you can see I also forgot to tape my edges on this one, so I'll have to sand these drips off, which is super annoying, but that's okay. Um, I'll just sand them down and sand them off. So I love coating them with resin. It looks super, really good. This technique worked really good. The only issue I have is that it gives it a lot of weight. So this is actually very heavy because there's a whole layer of resin on the back as well as the front. So that might be my only issue with this technique. Now the other one uh, is much lighter and I'm just going to swap them out. <laughs> So this one worked out really good too. Let's make sure you guys can see. <laughs> and it is significantly lighter. So you can see in the reflection there, it got nice coating. There is a little bit on the edge that ended up rejecting the resin. So I will have to sand this and just do a very thin coat to get that. But other than that, so there's the back taped up. It worked out really good. So that is the two techniques. Uh, I don't mind this one, but like I said, it does have a lot of weight to it. So it was much, much heavier than this technique of just using some foam board to support the middle and then coating it. So I think I would still continue to do it with the foam board but this one does work really good. I wouldn't want to do it on a very large piece because the weight of it would be extremely heavy. But that's kind of two techniques you can do to support the middle of your paintings so you can resin them. And resin, it, it works great. It seals your paintings in if, you know, you will protect it from damage and water and everything. So and it makes it super shiny and the colors really pop when you resin the fronts too. So I'll have links in the description below for the resin and some materials. You could check out my Crafty Gen Amazon store and I greatly appreciate you guys using my links. There's no extra cost to you but it helps me out so I greatly appreciate it. And thank you so much for subscribing, watching and liking guys. And I hope you guys all have fun putting coats of resin on your paintings to make them really pop and shine. Have an amazing day, guys. Thank you.